What's up guys and welcome to FPL Today. I'm the man in the know, JNO, and welcome to my team for Game Week 31 Transfer Thoughts, where I go over all the problems with my side and the transfers that I'm considering going into Game Week 31, which of course is a blank game week in a period of game weeks where there is a lot of blanks and double game weeks. If you don't know how to tackle these blanks and doubles, then do check out the videos in the playlist in the description where I go over all the blanks and double game weeks, strategies, the news that we've got so far, all of it is in there if you need any help with the blanks and doubles. Also, before we get into the video, I need your help to get nominated for the Football Blogging Awards. Please feel free to visit the link in the description down below to support me in the best fantasy football creator category or use the link to tweet out your support for FPL today. Also, a little side note, feel free to vote for the FPL Wildcats in the best new creator category. Anyway, enough plugging. You are going to get sick of that, unfortunately, but we will now get on with the video where we look at fires to put out for my game week 31 side. Now, with it being a blank game week, there is less options for me to consider, but I do need to think over these options extremely thoroughly because in this game week, if I have a terrible game week and other people don't, it is going to really affect my rank because it's one of those game weeks where I could see a climb, but I know there are people free hitting, so they're going to pick the best 11 they can. Potentially, that means they could get a really big score. And what it has meant is they haven't had to weaken their side going into game week 31, where potentially you could argue that I've had Fraser in there for so long while he's not been scoring points. I've had Digne while he's not been scoring points, although he is scoring points now. So you could argue that I have maybe lost out on some points in certain places. Although to be fair, I do feel like I've managed my transfers quite well and taken people out of my side at the right time. Right now we are fielding 10 players in game with 31. We have Aguero, Doherty, Jimenez and Pogba not playing in the 10 outfield players and we have Button who isn't playing either, but he is just kind of a placeholder at the moment until a wild card. So the player I'm going to definitely be transferring out is Sergio Aguero because I have the least value in him. I will bring him back with a free hit chip. I'm probably going to wild card him back in as well because he seems on form. And Man City, of course, are in the running for the Premier League title. So they're going to want to win as many Premier League games as possible. But the other questions I have to ask myself is right now I have no Chelsea cover. Do I want to bring the Chelsea player? Because I know Hazard is going to be highly owned. Higuain is going to be highly owned as well. And also Chelsea defenders. So can I get away without having Chelsea cover? Because to be honest, there's no Chelsea option that stands out to me and is screaming for selection. And then also, do I need West Ham cover? Because they are playing Huddersfield in game week 31. And that looks like a typically easy easy fixture for West Ham so potentially I should be looking at getting some West Ham players in all that being said I only have one transfer as well so it would be a minus four most likely if I wanted to cover both Chelsea and West Ham but before we get to that we will look at the fixtures and we have on the ease of fixtures Bournemouth standing out on top right now with Newcastle, Leicester, Burnley, Brian Hove Albion, Fulham and Southampton with no blanks which means especially for my strategy they are ideal because I can Take them out of my side when I am free hitting in double game with 32. They'll be back in my side for game with 33. And also they have a good run of fixtures anyway. So I might not necessarily have to take them out of my side. Same goes with Leicester, Burnley, Bournemouth, Huddersfield, Newcastle, West Ham. Then it does get a little bit tougher with Arsenal at the end of that run. Newcastle also look like they have an easy run of fixtures. Bournemouth... Arsenal isn't easy, but of course that's in the game week where I'm going to free hit. Crystal Palace, Leicester, Southampton and Brighton, Hove, Albion. And then Liverpool as well, Fulham, Tottenham, Southampton, Chelsea, Cardiff and Huddersfield. There are some tough fixtures in there, but they are both home fixtures for Liverpool. And again, all of those sides don't blank. Neither do Burnley. Burnley's potentially looks very difficult at the end of that run. But for the next four games, Leicester, Wolves, Bournemouth, Cardiff... Then it's Chelsea and Man City, so potentially time to jump off then. And also Chelsea with Everton, Cardiff, West Ham, Liverpool, Burnley and Manchester United. With them also having a fixture to reschedule. So they're likely to have a double game week at some point. So those sides are ideal sides to bring in players for. Teams with blanks, as you can see at the bottom there, you've got Manchester City, Manchester United and Arsenal. Also look like they have very good fixtures. So they're going to be players I do consider after game week 31. And we know the lay of the land with all the rescheduled fixtures. So who to bring in for Aguero and we are looking at five options two from Newcastle and did I think I'd be suggesting two Newcastle forwards in game week 31 just a couple of weeks ago it would have been very unlikely but both Perez and Rondon have stood out as very good options going into this blank game week Perez is probably the big differential as well because a lot of people have gone with Rondon Perez and Rondon 26 and 27 points apiece 
returns. They've both returned two in four games. Three goals to Perez, two for Rondon. One assist to Perez, two assists to Rondon. And five bonus points to Rondon, but three to Perez. However, if you look at the underlying stats, the more attempts by Rondon, more attempts from inside the box from Rondon, but shots on target is the exact same. Big chances is in Perez's favour as well, which is surprising to me. The minutes per chance, of course, is in Rondon's favour because he's taken more shots. But then chances created, Rondon actually leads away with 11 chances created to 9 and two big chances created to one. So I was kind of expecting all the numbers to be the other way around when I was looking at these two players, but both look like potential good options. We then got Ashley Barnes, 5.7 million. His momentum seems to have died down a bit, but he did just play Liverpool. 17 points, two returns in four, two goals, one bonus point, 10 attempts on goal, eight from inside the box, but only two on target, which is very disappointing. We've also got three big chances, minute per chance of 33.7, two chances created and one big chance created. Those numbers pale in comparison to Rondon and Perez, unfortunately. So Barnes, while he was a consideration a couple of weeks ago for me, it looks like I'm not going to be jumping on the Barnes train anytime soon. Higuain is there because he's Chelsea cover, but to be honest, his underlying stats are the poorest out of all of these strikers, despite the fact he's the most expensive. 14 points, one return from four, one goal, two bonus points, 15 attempts on goal in total, 11 from inside the box, only four on target, and only one of those chances has been a big chance. So while his minutes per chance is the best out of everyone, 17.6, the quality of chances he's getting isn't actually that impressive. And then five chances created, but no big chances. But the guy I'm leaning towards is Callum Wilson at 6.3 million. Now here, it isn't the last four game weeks. It's the last four game weeks he's played in, I've got the stats from. And that's 28 points, three returns from four, three goals, one assist, five bonus points. Less attempts on goal than the likes of Rondon and Perez. Eight attempts, six from inside the box, but six shots on target with two big chances and a minute per chance creation of 38.8 with three chances created all being big chances. I just like Wilson. He was really in form when I had him and he looks like the good option because the fixtures are really in Bournemouth's favour going towards the end of this season. So I'm leaning towards Wilson coming in, but again, that means I've got no Chelsea covers, which is another problem I had in the fires to put out part of the video. So we look at no Chelsea cover, and to be honest, the only two players I really want to consider, we have Eden Hazard at 10.8 million and Azpilicueta at 6.3. Now, my problem is neither has been setting the world alight, and for Chelsea players with the more premium price tag, I'm expecting more. 19 points from both, two returns from four for both, one goal, one assist from Hazard, two assists from Azpilicueta, but the underlying stats aren't screaming out to me to bring him into my side. Now, of course, Eden Hazard could have a great game week. He can have a great game week any game week. And Azpilicueta is a defender that could get a clean sheet and then could pop up with an assist out of nowhere. So it's a bit worrying to not have Chelsea players, but nothing about these stats is telling me to bring him in. I mean, six attempts from Hazard in the last four game weeks, four from inside the box, three on target, no big chances. Six chances created, but no big chances created. Whereas Azpilicueta, three attempts on goal, one from inside the box, but it wasn't on target and wasn't a big chance. And three chances created, but only one big chance created. And to be honest, I've already got Van Dijk and Andrew Robertson. So I've kind of hedged my bets with Liverpool. I don't think I can really jump to another premium price defender at this point in the season. So I feel like I should have Chelsea cover, but just there is no option that I want to bring in. Now this could be a great call by me right now it could be a detriment to my season but I just don't think I'm going to be bringing in a Chelsea player that's not to say don't bring the Chelsea player yourself if you think they're going to do well against Everton go for it I just have a gut feeling that I don't need a Chelsea player in game week 31. And then the other question is, do I need West Ham cover? They are playing Huddersfield. If they weren't playing Huddersfield, I'd probably forget about them. Again, the issue is who to go with though. Right now, the standout options look to me to be Antonio at 6.8 million, Javier Hernandez at 6.1 and Snodgrass at 5 million. Now to me, there's issues with all of these players here. A lot of people have Philippe Anderson, so all of these could be differentials in my favour. But Antonio, 6.8 million, only nine points in the last four game weeks with one goal. He has had eight attempts on goal, five from inside the box with three on target and also created two chances. So that isn't too bad. But I'd kind of want a bit more history of returns and points. Then we have Javier Hernandez, 6.1 million. He's managed to get 15 points from the last four game weeks with only one goal being scored and one assist. 
Again, I'd want a bit more from him. The underlying stats aren't fantastic. Seven attempts on goal, all from inside the box, but only two shots on target with two big chances. In a minute per chance of 32 minutes, they're strikers that have better underlying stats than that. And then Snodgrass as well, five million. I could bring him in for Barnes or Alamiron. But again, 16 points, two returns from four, two assists, three bonus points, five attempts on goal, four from inside the box. The plus side with him is 10 chances created with two big chances created in the last four. If I was going to bring in a West Ham player, which doesn't exactly fill me with a load of confidence, it probably would be Snodgrass. But is there a midfielder I want to take out for Snodgrass? Not really. I could take out Pogba. I've not got as much faith in Pogba as I did have about two weeks ago. But I've got so much value in Pogba that it might be worth keeping him for free hit and for the wild card. He could drop more in price, but I think a lot of people are going to stick with Pogba and Rashford. So... I'm not sure Snodgrass is a good pick, but West Ham against Huddersfield, I kind of want some sort of West Ham cover in that game because I feel like West Ham could win that one. Then again, West Ham are the perfect type of side to go and lose to Huddersfield, so I could gamble on that fixture and nothing good happen. So as you can see, I'm really struggling to see what other move to make than to transfer out Aguero. My plan was always to take a minus four in this game week to bring in a big hitter like Hazard. And the issue I have is the player that maybe I would lean towards would be Mane. But if I bring in Mane, I need to take out a Liverpool defender because I already have three from Liverpool already. So if you want to know what move I do make, you are going to have to follow me on Twitter, unfortunately, because just before the deadline, I will release a little video on Twitter announcing my transfer. So we know Callum Wilson is likely, but it all depends on if I do want to bring in Mane, Hazard or someone else, like maybe Firmino in the striker position, who could be a good differential. But I may just go with Callum Wilson and field an 11 and not go with any Chelsea or West Ham cover. Right now, that's what it feels like I'm likely to do, having looked at these stats. Hopefully that has helped you out with your transfer thoughts going into Blank Game Week 31. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below. Also... If you have enjoyed this video, please make sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you're new, hitting that notification bell so you know when my videos go live. And again, apologies for this because it might get a little bit annoying, but don't forget to vote for me in the Football Blogging Awards. I'll make the little plug as short as possible from now on, I promise. I've been JNO, this has been FPL Today, and remember, it's all about the game.